Well, again, my name's Ahmad Rowe. Uh, I'm the owner and founder of DNA's Realty Team Capital LLC. And before I talk a little bit about my company, I just want to introduce myself uh, more thoroughly. I'm originally from Jersey City. Uh, I lived in Washington State for about 10 years. You know, you guys are from the West Coast. Um, I did not go to college for business. I did two years at Passaic County Community College to be a teacher. I didn't want to be a teacher. Teachers don't make money. So um, I, I didn't pursue <laughs> that path. Um, I didn't know anything about business. I actually, I took one course in business at Passaic County Community College, and I believe that was just an introductory course. So everything that I learned was by trial and error. <laughs> a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of error, a lot of, a lot of error. So I'm, um, I'm going to speak from experience. Um, had the privilege to, to have some mentors in my life. Um, you, are you guys familiar with Robert Kiyosaki? Yeah. Okay. Uh, are you guys familiar with his real estate advisor, Ken McElroy? Okay, so Ken McElroy, that's his real estate guy. I had an opportunity to talk with him and he, to pick his brain a little bit. So I'm just going to share some insights from my own personal experiences and also from, from his personal experience. Um, uh, I was raised in foster care. Uh, so I had like a surrogate mother. I didn't grow up with uh, my mom or dad. I actually didn't grow up with my siblings at all. Um, and yeah, so that's my story. You know, I, I can, um, yeah, I'm a firm believer that we, we, can, um, we can dictate our lives. So we can look at our lives in a positive way or a negative way. It's all our choice. And I chose to, to look at my life in a positive way and do something good in my life regardless of my past. So. I'm here to share with you guys. Hopefully, you'll, you'll learn something. Hopefully, um, we'll, you'll be inspired. Hopefully, we'll all be edified, and we can all gain some insight from each other. So DNA is Realty and Capital. Again, it's a financial services company, and I work with a lot of investors, a lot of business owners, entrepreneurs, some hedge funds, some REITs, insurance companies, private investors, and, and wealthy investors. And regardless of the business's credit profile or the individual's credit profile or credit score, I help them obtain funding. And I do it in 19 different ways. So my reason for uh, starting this business is I want to take away the excuse from every business owner and entrepreneur that, you know, we don't, I don't have enough money. I don't want that to be an excuse. That is no longer an excuse. That's, that's what keeps me going every single day, regardless of all the pitfalls and all the, the nonsense, all right? So really fast, one thing that I've just recently learned a few months ago, and to me it's a complete game changer. Regardless of your personal credit score, credit profile, or credit history, you can still obtain funding. How? It just so happens that your business is an extension of you with its own social security number or EIN number. So your business can build its own credit with no attachment to your social security number, no attachment to you at all. Now, when I learned that, to me, that was a complete game changer. Because again, I'm, I'm a, a guy from Jersey City. I didn't have wealthy people in my life. Uh, I didn't have a lot of money in my life. Uh, I'm a big advocate of OPM, other people's money. And when I found this out, I was like, wow, you know, this takes away from every excuse that I would, can ever create in my mind. And now that you have the knowledge, that's gonna take away from your excuses as well. So if you need funding, we'll talk later. Uh, it's a process, I'm not gonna lie, it's about a, a three to six month process. But once you get the funding, you can get anywhere between 50,000 to 250,000 in corporate credit cards with no attachment to your social security number. So again, that's a, that's a, that's a complete game changer to me, okay? So uh, the name of my topic or my talk better yet tonight, it's nurturing the entrepreneur mindset. So I'm gonna go over five points. Point number one, the formula for success. 70% personal development, 30% business. Now this was told to me by Ken McElroy, and I'll go further in detail about our, our conversation and um, his knowledge and why you should listen to him and, and, and not me. Uh, number two, the power of mentors. Number three, believe in yourself. A man without a dream perishes. 
Point number four, every failure has an equivalent seed of success if you're looking. Point number five, you are hung by your tongue. What are you saying to yourself? And I'm going to use this formula prep. I'm going to, I like to thank Brian Tracy. He actually gave me um, this layout. Prep, P, I'm going to give you my point of view on each point, my reason behind each point, an example behind each point, and again, I'm going to reiterate my point of view. Okay? So, formula, uh, point number one, formula for success 70% personal development, 30% business. So I mentioned before uh, Ken McLevoy, he's an advisor to Robert Kiyosaki. Now most of you guys have heard of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Uh, to be frank, that's just the tip of the iceberg of Robert Kiyosaki. Um, the guy, his net worth is $80 million, right? He, he makes anywhere between five to, to 30 million on a monthly basis without lifting a finger. So the guy knows what the hell he's talking about, right? So Ken McLevoy, who's his uh, real estate advisor, He's been in the business for 30 years. And again, I'm, I'm only 30, so he has way more experience than me. And during his 30-year time frame, he has raised over $400 million in debt and equity, right? So the guy knows what he's talking about. He's legitimate. Um, he, his name speaks for itself. So um, one day I was listening to a podcast, you know, Rich, the um, Rich Dad podcast, and um, they were talking about raising money. And they mentioned, all right, well, you should have a mentor and um, you should reach out to somebody so they can guide you. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to give it a try. So I reached out to Ken, Ken McLevoy. He was actually on the, the podcast that day. So I spoke to him and I said, hey, Ken, you know, this is who I am. This is what I'm doing. What's your advice? And he said, Ahmad, right now what you're probably doing is 70% business and 30% personal development. And I said, Ken, you're, you're right. He said, you need to switch to two. You need to do 70% personal development, 30% business. Now, I heard that before. Like, I listen to a lot of different podcasts. I read a lot of different books. I've heard so many people say that. But when he said it to me on the phone, it just it clicked. It registered. And I realized, wow, prosperity must be an inside job, right? That changed my life, I'll be honest with you. Ever since I had that conversation with him, uh, I've always been a, um, a personal development junkie, but um, I wasn't, you know, I, again, I did it 30% of the time. This next day, I totally switched my schedule around. I woke up in the morning, I read, I, made it, I meditated, um, I read, <laughs> I put forth some action, and I spent very, very little time on my business. And so far, so good. You know, again, the guy, you know, raised 400 million. I think I know, he knows what he's talking about, right? So that's point number one. If you guys want to be successful, 70% personal development, 30% business. Now, Tony Robbins talks a lot about the um, having a work-life balance. I think you mentioned that over earlier, Xavier. And he says, you know what, that's not really true. What Tony Robbins does, he, he brings his family with him to work. So if he's traveling, you know, beforehand he would take the train, take the uh, take the airplane, and put his family in the hotel. You know, now that he's worth 200 million, he can fly his own private jet and put his family wherever he needs to, right? So there is no work-life balance. You bring your family with you along for the ride, right? So I thought that was a, I thought that was a, a pretty profound thing. Okay. So again, prosperity is an inside job. Business is a duplication of yourself, all right? If your business is struggling and having problems, it's because you're struggling and you're having problems. If your business is not growing, it's because you're not growing. Again, your business is an extension of yourself or a duplicate of yourself, all right? So if you want your business to grow, you gotta grow. If your business is not going to grow, that means you're not growing. Now, I've, I've gone through that personally. You know, there's been times, my wife can attest to it, where, you know, one month we made X amount, and the next month we're like, I don't know, how are we going to pay the light bill, you know? And it wasn't because 
I was doing anything wrong or, you know, business wasn't going. It was because I was suffering. I, I, I was making mistakes. I, I wasn't growing. So that I had to take accountability for that. So when you guys get into your business, again, if you're not growing, your business is not going to grow. So that personal development, that's a lifelong process. It's like school. And to be frank, I hate the school districts. I hate school. But that's a whole other topic. I prefer the school of life, and I prefer personal development. And again, that's a lifelong process that never, never, never stops. You got to constantly be growing, constantly be evolving. All right? Jim Rohn says, your income suddenly exceeds personal development. Your income suddenly exceeds personal development. So there's a, there's a I forgot the gentleman's name, but there's a law of the lid. You guys ever heard that expression yeah. before? John Maxwell, John Maxwell called the law of the lid. So if you, if, you, if you have this interpretation of yourself and how, how you view your life, your income is not going to surpass that. It's just not, right? So what you got to do, you got to raise that lid. You got to raise that lid. You got to raise that lid. You got to, Reverend Ike says, you, you have to be crazy enough to go for your dreams and achieve it, right? Being sane doesn't really make money. Sane people are broke. I don't want to be sane and broke. I'd rather be crazy and prosper, prosperous so I can help other people out, right? All right, personal development is a ladder to success. It's a lifelong process. Pardon me. Okay, it's a lifelong process. It's a way for us to acquire skills and qualities. It's also a way for us to aim towards our goals and achieve them. That's important, right? That's very important. If you're constantly setting goals and you're not achieving them, that's going to create a lot of internal conflict. You're going to start doubting yourself. You're going to get angry. You may even want to quit. But there's a formula. There's people have already done it. We can do it too. Never quit, all right? Never quit. Number two, power of mentors. Mentors guide your step. They're able to see things from a higher level. They can reduce, they can increase your time to get to the finish line a lot faster, okay? But most importantly, you have to choose your mentors wisely. You got to choose your mentors wisely. Uh, there's some mentors out there that's going to teach you how to be uh, quote unquote in the middle class. There's some mentors out there that's going to teach you to be quote unquote poor. And then there's some mentors that are going to teach you how to be rich. I like to go for those mentors, the guys that are going to teach me to be rich. That's why I reached out to Ken McLeroy. I knew how much the guy was worth. I knew his status. I wanted to be just like him, so I wouldn't settle. That's why I picked up the phone and I sent him an email. All right, you got to choose your mentors wisely. Amateurs have themselves, professionals have mentors. Robert Kiyosaki said that. Uh, all the greats from all industries, you know, from LeBron James, Michael Jordan, Bill Gates, they all have mentors. They all have mentors. I played basketball for a little bit. I'm not really good at basketball, but I, I played. I played semi-pro basketball in the Bronx. Now, I didn't play much in the game. I sat on the bench. I'm an honest guy, but I was on the team. That's all that matters, right? So, <laughs> now, our, 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 our team, you know, we weren't well-funded. Uh, we didn't have trainers. We didn't have nutritionists. We didn't have uh, cardio and, and fitness coaches, but if we had enough money, we would have had all those things, right? So professionals have mentors. Now, you're going to come across people that says, you know what? Whatever the mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve. Absolutely believe that. But why go through all that pain and suffering when if Sophia speaks Spanish and I want to learn to speak Spanish, why would I try to learn it on my own? I can just go to Sophia. Same for success. Someone's already successful, and Ken told me this, uh, find a mentor that's recently retired and that will mentor you. Someone local, right? Someone local, someone you can meet with on a monthly basis. Go have lunch with them, have breakfast with them, coffee, and pick their brain. 
All right, pick their brain. Success leaves clues. So don't be creative, make money first. All right, Russell Bronson said, you can be creative later. You want to make money first. And you can make money by having a mentor, someone to guide your steps, guide you through the process. Okay? Uh, Bill Gates, most of you guys heard of Bill Gates? <laughs> awesome. So when he, was, uh, when he was a young kid, he was having a conversation with his mom. And he said, hey, mom, I, I, I like to, to speak to Warren Buffett. You know, I like to have a conversation with Warren Buffett. Um, he left, came back that evening. Warren Buffett was in his living room. They were ha he was having tea with his dad. He had a chance to, to pick Warren Buffett's brain, right? Uh, that story tells me, wow, that's awesome. Like, you know, Bill Gates, he's number one on the Forbes list. I just checked yesterday. He has a mentor. He had a mentor. And I'm pretty sure he still has a mentor. Mentors are essential, guys. They're essential. Mentors are considered guides. They help you avoid pitfalls and can help you create clarity. So as I talked about in point number one, the personal development, a lot of times um, we are our worst enemies. You know, we've been programmed to, for lack of better words, for destruction, for lack of better words. Now, I don't call it evil or, you know, um, or, um, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Evil or um, wrong. I, people are just greedy that way, right? That's why financial education is not taught in school because they don't, they don't want us to be financially educated, right? Uh, but, but mentor is going to help you. Mentor is going to help you. They can guide your steps. Um, and they want you to be successful. They do. They get, they get off at, of, uh, by helping other people be successful. So if you guys don't have a mentor, find one. If you need help finding one, you can go to Google. There's a list of about 500 CEOs that recently retired from Fortune 100 and 500 companies. Find that list, email these guys, call them. That's what I've been doing. All right. So if you don't want to, you know, if you want a smaller uh, mentor, you can find one. But remember, your mentor is a reflection of yourself. When you have a mentor, when you choose a mentor, that's the person you want to emulate and be. So choose your mentors wisely. All right. Number three: believe in yourself. Believe in your dreams. A man without a vision or dreams will perish. Bill Britt said that. Uh, Bill Britt, he was one of the um, head guys in Amway. He is wonderful. I don't know if you guys had the uh, opportunity to hear uh, him speak either on YouTube or in person, but uh, that guy's amazing. He's shaking his head. He knows Bill Britt. Bill Britt's amazing. Bill Britt's amazing. Bill and Peggy Britt. Yep, you know it. You know it. So you need, you need your dream to keep pushing, right? So when you start your business, you're going to have a lot of failure, a lot. <laughs> and most of the times you won't make money. You won't. But your dream has to push you. That vision has to keep you going. And I would say think big. Think big. Think big. All right. Well, any soccer players in here? Any soccer players? I know my wife's so kind of sort of. Okay, so imagine this. So imagine going to a soccer field. You got your soccer ball. You got your team. But there's no goal. Right? There's no goal. There's nothing. We, we're going to kick the ball. There's, there's, there's nothing there. Right? <laughs> Same thing in business. So imagine starting a business. You don't got an end goal. You, you, you're just starting this business. You, you're, gonna, you're wasting your time. You got to have a dream. You got to have a goal. Now, do you want better? Imagine going to the soccer field, you kick the ball and the goal, and you miss, and then you quit. Wouldn't that be pr pretty devastating? All right, Matt, Roland, what, what's, who's a big soccer player? Ronaldo? Ronaldo Dio. Ronaldo Dio. So could you imagine him going to, like, going to a game, he kicks the ball, and he misses, and he's like, you know what, I quit. I don't want to kick the ball anymore. I, I'm just done. That's insane, right? Same thing for your business. You're going to have a lot of failures. Don't quit. Because to be frank, uh, the way that our economy is going, entrepreneurs are freaking need it. You have a dream and you have a goal that you have to accomplish because someone out there needs your product. 
they need your service. And if you don't accomplish that, you're going to be damned by your own thoughts. And to me, that's the worst type of hell. No one would if. Right? No one would if. So you guys have to act on your dreams and your goals. You have to. It's needed in the marketplace. All right? All right. My first year of business, a lot of setbacks. My wife was pregnant at the time with our second daughter. We had a lot of troubles. We had a lot of fights. I had a lot of doubts. I had, um, you know, there's a lot of times where I just wanted to quit. But my dream kept me going. And my dream keeps me going. You know, I have a dream of being the next Chase or the next Wells Fargo. I want to be that damn big. All right? Dream or die. Dream or dies. You got a choice. I would say dream. Go for it. What's the worst that can happen? Point number four, every failure has an equivalent seed of success if you're looking. Now I put if you're looking because all of us have problems, right? All of us have troubles. We all got a sad story to tell. And I don't mean that in any insensitive way. I don't mean that at all. However, if you keep looking, there's an equivalent seed of positivity or success, right? Now, diamonds, she has, a, she has a diamond on, right? So have you guys seen a diamond before it's a diamond? What does it look like? That's a black rock. Not a pretty thing, right? No shape, no form. How does that diamond become a diamond? Do you, do you know? Pressure. Yeah. Lots of fucking pressure. <laughs> Lots of heat. And time. And time. <laughs> Lots. Lots. Right? Now let's, now let's replace that, that rock with us. We're that rock. Now let's, let's replace that heat with our trials. So what's going to happen in the end? We're going to be that diamond. Right? Now I believe where most people mess up is when they go through all these problems, they go through all these trials, they go through all these fires, they quit. They get fed up. They don't want anything. To, oh, it's too hard. Oh, I don't want to do it. Right? To me, um, quitting is the easy route. I've never took an easy route in my life. Never. There's no shortcut to success. There's no elevator. You got to take the stairs. Then the stairs are fun. <laughs> you meet a lot of people. You grow. You transform. You make some money in the process. But most importantly, you get to help a lot of people out. And that's what it's about. You know, Robert Kiyosaki talks about how your, your, your business, it's, it's somewhat spiritual. It has to have more of a mission than a financial, than financially. It has to have a, a spiritual part to it. Because again, the, the monetary thing, it's, that only pushes you oh so much. And then that, you know, those first couple of years when you're, when you're growing your business, you, you don't really, I mean, I, I didn't see much money. You know what I mean? I, I definitely didn't see it. So um, that, that monetary um, gain or that monetary factor is not, you know, it's not really there. It has to be bigger than money. Right? It has to be much, much bigger than money. So your business has to have some type of spiritual component to it. Now, I don't mean spiritual in the sense of, you know, religion or anything. You know, I'm a kind of religious guy, I'm spiritual as well. But you, you, your, your business has to be bigger than money. You have to have a why. You have to have a why. You know, Napoleon Hill talked in the, um, uh, not the master key to riches, think and grow rich. What's principle number one for success? Desire. Desire, yes. Your why. You got to have that desire. You got to have that why. Because that desire and why is going to push you and catapult you past all the nonsense you're going to have, past all the education that you don't have. I know in my case, all the education that I don't have, you know, all the connections that I don't have. It's just, um, you know, grit and grind, you know, but it's fun. It's fun. I remember. I used to work on um, 
23rd and 6th. I was working for this, um, this technology company. And this is times where I was selling hotels. And I didn't, I didn't sell one, but I tried. <laughs> this is time I was selling hotels. So I would go on my lunch break. I would take the company laptop. I would go to McDonald's. I would log on to their Wi-Fi. And then I would cold call some hedge funds. And I would say, hey, my name is Ahmad Rowe, DNA's Realty and Capital. I have some hotels to sell. What type of hotels do you want? That, in essence, that was, that was my pitch, right? It was fun, though. You know, I look back on it, that's great. I, didn't, I, I had like a Gmail domain. And remind you, like, I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't selling like $100 hotels. Like, these hotels were, I think the biggest one we got under contract was $15.5 million. And that was in like South Beach, Florida. So these weren't like ranky dink hotels. Like these are you know pretty large size hotels. And I mean the guys didn't know on the other end I was at McDonald's, you know, with the Gmail account. They just knew I was hungry and I had some damn hotels for sale. Right? I had that desire. I had that desire. And I still have it. I still have it. Okay, so as I mentioned before, guys, I was um, and every failure has the equivalent seat of success. I was raised in foster care. So I lived in, in Washington State for about 10 years. And every time um, I thought about my family, I always thought about, damn, why? You know, like, what, what's my family doing in New Jersey? You know, what, what's happening with my, my friends in New Jersey and my family? I remember being in Washington, it, was three, it would be three or four o'clock, and I would say, oh, it's six o'clock in New Jersey. You know, like my heart was in New Jersey, you know, my family was in New Jersey, and I always wanted to come back to New Jersey. And growing up, I was angry, I was bitter, and, you know, rightfully so. I didn't have my parents around, and I was growing up with this surrogate person, mother, I, I didn't know her. And uh, when I turned 18, I grew out of the system, I moved out, lived with some friends for uh, like, like six or eight months. My buddies couldn't pay the rent. So we got evicted. So I came back to New Jersey. And again, I always thought about, man, what's, why did I leave New Jersey? What's happening in New Jersey? What's going on? So I, I came back to New Jersey. I lived in Newark with uh, my uncle. So I rem have you guys ever been to Newark? Like maybe 10 years ago? Before, <laughs> before the gentrification? All right, so Newark, I, <laughs> before the gentrification. So I remember going, <laughs> so I remember going to Newark and or, or my uncle lived, um, you know, uh, he lived a good maybe five feet from the graveyard, you know, in, in Newark, like on one of the South Streets, like South 12th or something. And if you're familiar with Newark, you know, the South Side of Newark is, is not a, it's not a pretty sight. So I remember um, coming coming back to New Jersey. I took the bus, by the way, the Greyhound. I didn't have enough money for a plane. I took the bus, three day trip. So I came back to New Jersey, and I'll stay with my uncle. And again, I'm all, back in my mind, I'm always thinking, why did I not live in New Jersey? Why was I not raised in New Jersey with my family? So I remember coming to Newark, and I felt just a negativity around me. You know, like, certain, you know, you guys can go to certain areas, and you just know, like, you know, it's not safe. You know, I shouldn't be here. I had that feeling in Newark. And I remember looking on the ground, and it was full of trash. It was just dirty. You know, it was just like, my gosh, like, why have trash cans? You can just use the use the ground. You know, it was like it was it was it was really dirty. And again, I'm always thinking to myself, man, why didn't I live in New Jersey? And then it hits me, this is why I was not raised in New Jersey in my family. Look at this. You know, my 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 uncle was living in not the best situation. This is when you know when when gangs were picking up heavy in New Jersey. Trash is around here. And eventually when I got in contact with my, my, my father, you know, my father was living in, in the projects in Jersey City. You know, he, still, he was in his 50s, God bless his soul, still living in the projects. And then again, I had figured out why I was not raised with my family in New Jersey. Because I wouldn't be the man I am today. I, I simply wouldn't. You know, I, I would probably grew up in the projects. And remind you, where I lived in Washington State was not the suburbs. Like it was, it was a pretty rough area, but it was nowhere near rough as, as Newark or Jersey City. You know, nowhere near rough at all. And again, I was like, this is why I was raised 
and watch. This is why. This is why, you know. And then it hit me. Every failure has an equivalent seed of success if you're looking. And I was looking. I was definitely looking. And I'm pretty sure some of you guys can relate to that. Maybe you have some stories that you're wondering why and, you know, how and why. Look for that, that seed of success. And in business, you're going to have the same thing. I have a buddy. Um, I won't share his name. I have a buddy. He, used to, he worked for this uh, gentleman that was from Brazil. Now, the guy from Brazil, he's around my age. You know, his, his, he's a multimillionaire. His families are multimillionaires. You know, they're well off. A long story short, my, my buddy works with this guy, uh, took on a whole bunch of debt, close to like 700000 worth of debt, and didn't really make any money. And most of my, you know, most people can look at his situation like, dude, you, you got screwed. You know, you took on all this debt, you didn't make any money, and, you know, you got caught holding the bag. I told him, dude, that was probably the best thing to happen to you. That was probably the best thing for your life. Because I'm pretty sure you developed some connections. I'm pretty sure you learned the intricates of business. I'm pretty sure you learned how to sell. I'm pretty sure you learned more about the banking system than I know. Those are probably the best years of your life if you apply them and if he's looking for them, all right? Okay, and point number five, you are hung by your tongue. What are you saying to yourself? Um, my brother told me when you try, you fail. You either do or you don't, all right? There's no try. Either you're gonna do it or you're not gonna do it. There's, there's no middle, right? There's no middle. Um, I know, Drill, you talked about, you know, uh, one day or someday. You know, don't go to Someday Island. Who said that, Denise? Who, who was that, Brian Tracy? Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins. Get off of Someday Island. Make it happen now. Make it happen now. You're hung by your tongue, so you got to watch what you say to yourself. you got to watch what you say to yourself, especially when things are rough, because that's when you start beating yourself up the most. Now, I'm pretty sure most of you guys heard of affirmations. They're key. They're important. If you guys have a chance, uh, read this book by Hell, Hell, Ma Hell Arad, The Miracle Morning. Go read that book. But more importantly, do the damn book. Don't just read it. Now, I've, I haven't read the book, but I read the part about savers. You know, I read that part, but most importantly, I implement it. Right? You got to watch what you say to yourself. Because you're going to have your friends, your family, and other people always trying to beat you up. You don't need to beat yourself up. Trust me. You got other people are going to do that, especially in business. Don't do that. Save yourself the trouble. Speak kindly to yourself, even if you don't have a dollar in your pocket. Who cares? Because you're not your situation. You're not that, that point of time, right? Now, I could have easily said, you know what? Because the way I, where I was born and how I came up, man, there's no way I can be successful. You know, I, I have a million excuses to allude to, right? I'm not going to. And neither should you. Even when things are tough, things are tough. And things, they're going to get tough, especially if you're going to grow as big as, as you imagine or as I would hope for you to be. Things are going to get tough. But remember, you are not your situation. You are not your situation. Always talk positive to yourself. Always, no matter what. No matter what. Okay? Um, I heard this recently. You are five words from a six or seven figure income. Our minds and subconscious minds need to be reprogrammed. And I don't mean that in like, you know, in a, in a, in a what is the word? In a negative evil way. I don't mean that, but, you know, let's be frank. None of us were taught how to be entrepreneurs. None of us were taught how to balance, uh, you know, profit and loss statements or a balance sheet. That is something we, we weren't taught, right? You have to reprogram yourself. You have to. Like, I just found out recently discipline is a very intricate part of entrepreneurialism. No idea. I didn't know. Now I have to learn how to discipline myself and how to implement it. 
You got to reprogram yourself, guys. You have to. Robert Kiyosaki talks about there's five, uh, not characteristics, but there's five things that an entrepreneur must learn to be successful. First one is sales. Second one is accounting. Third one is investments. Fourth one is leadership. And what is the fifth one? Sales, accounting. I think it was team building. Uh, you know what? I think it, the fifth one was team building. But again, none, I mean, did anybody go to college for leadership? Accounting? Sales? No, nope, there's no college. You know what? I, there's not even a course for discipline. I went online. When I found out how important discipline was, I was like, all right, maybe I can find a course in the city. Couldn't find one. I found a book on discipline and, and, a, um, and a workbook, but we have to reprogram ourselves. We have to reprogram ourselves, okay? Uh, in my various studies, mind hacking, neuropsychology, neuroplasticity, and I probably mispronounced that, and affirmations are needed to rewire our minds in order to take control and move forward. Napoleon Hill has a prayer. Um, it, it goes, um, O divine providence, ask not for more riches, but for more wisdom, with which to use wisely the riches I receive at birth in the form of power and control to direct my mind to whatever ends I desire. Now, our, from what I've comprehend, our, the most beautiful and powerful thing in this life are our minds. Now, there's always a war for our minds. There is. You can turn on the Channel 11 News, and to be frank, I don't watch news, but I can tell you what's on there. Someone got killed, someone got murdered, someone got killed, someone got murdered. And it's going to rain tomorrow, right? Now, if you constantly put that in your mind, how are you going to act? Right? You're going to be negative. You're going to be depressed. You're going to be upset. And you may kill somebody. <laughs> right? Now, the opposite. If you put in your mind, I can, I can achieve it. I can win. I can go for it. I'll never quit. Same thing. You're going to const you're gonna, you're gonna act that. It's, you're going to program yourself for that. So you got to watch what you put in your minds. Now, uh, whatever you put in your minds, that stays there forever. Think about that. So if you go home and you watch something that has n something negative, or if you go and you read the newspaper. Now, I read the newspaper, like the financial newspaper, because I like to know what's going on. But, you know, other parts of the newspaper, I just I already know what's in there. You got to watch what you put in your minds, especially as entrepreneurs. Because as entrepreneurs, you're leaders. You know, people are going to buy you before they buy your product. When you grow your team, your team are going to, they're going to buy you before you buy their product. Mikhail, I bought you before I even knew about your product. I, I like you, so I may look into your product. People buy you before they buy their product. You're leaders. As on, and again, leadership is learned and it's taught, but most importantly, you got to apply it. You got to apply it. All right. Oh, yes. So um, for the last 100 years, according to my knowledge, uh, like in my family, um, um, I, don't, I can't think of one person that has been an entrepreneur in my family. Uh, now, most of my family, I love them. You know, most of them have been drug dealers and criminals. But I, I can't think of one person that has been like an entrepreneur. So I think to myself, well, Hell, how did I become an entrepreneur? I always thought to myself, even when I was living in Washington State and I didn't have anything and, you know, there was a bunch of nonsense going around, I always thought that I deserved more. I always thought I deserved better. Like, I didn't know how I was going to succeed, but I always knew I was going to succeed. Always knew, that's always been a thought deep, deep, deep within me. That I was going to succeed, that, I, that, that I'll make it. Again, I didn't know how, but I knew I was going to. Okay? Again, guys, you are hung by your tongue. You have to watch.
accept what you say to yourself. And in closing, I just would like to thank you for your time. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate you. I appreciate you um, hearing my story. Um, it's good. Right there. Right there. Oh, I appreciate you being here, guys, on Facebook. I appreciate you hearing my story. Uh, hopefully you learned something. Um, if not, oh well. No, I'm joking. I'm pretty sure you learned something. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you learned something. But um, uh, no matter what, guys, um, the way that our, our economy is going, um, it, it seems like we're going to be repeating history. And what I mean by that, uh, before Henry Ford created you know, the Ford umpire, uh, most of our ancestors were entrepreneurs. Before you created the whole big business and all that stuff, everybody was an entrepreneur. And the way the economy is going, it seems like history will surely repeat itself. So we need you entrepreneurs to go out there and live your dreams and, live, and, and don't make any excuses. It's going to be tough. I know we have to rewire ourselves. I know we have to reprogram ourselves, brainwash ourselves. But trust me, it's fun. It's well worth it. And what else are you going to do with your life? Thank you. You got to get out there and you got to make moves. You got to do what you got to do. Nothing is going to come to you. You know, don't expect anything to come to you. And if you want these things, you, you dream of these things, and you don't make any effort and make any moves consistently to go out and get it. And there's nothing wrong with that either. As long as you don't make any excuses,